These are the Raspberry Pi Picos we all know and love. So here's the original Pico, here's the Pico W, and here is the Pico 2. But these things are kind of pedestrian next to today's video subject. I don't know if you know it, but you can finally get the RP2350B. That is the 80-pin variant of the uh, Pico 2. And there are only currently two boards that I see in common circulation with the B moniker. So one is the Solder Party Stamp XL, highly recommended. The reason I didn't order one of those is that it doesn't use standard pin headers. It uses a, a two millimeter instead of 2.54 millimeter pin headers. And then there's this beast by WeAct Studio. So this thing is a monster. The RP2350B itself, 150 megahertz, ARM Cortex M33 uh, or Hazard 3 Risk 5. So you have two cores. You can pick both uh, Risk 5, uh, both M33s or one of each. It has 48 GPIO, including eight analog inputs, as opposed to uh, these guys, which only have four analog inputs. It has three PIO blocks, which means 12 state machines built in. It has two channels of UART, two of SPI, and two of I squared C, meaning that you can have peripherals galore. It has 24 PWM channels. This thing is insane. Now this board by WeAct itself, it has a 16 megs of flash. I believe this is the additional flash package up here. And there's also room to add more on the bottom here using GPIO zero as a selector for it. It also has a built-in LED on pin 25 and a built-in switch on pin 23. And the other switch down here is a reset and a boot switch. Only bad thing about this board here is that uh, WeAct Studio still hasn't put their, uh, their information on GitHub at the time of recording. And at the time of recording, this is $5.40 Canadian link in the description with the uh, $2 of shipping. Now, the big problem with this board is when it comes to prototyping. So since it has the dual inline pins, you can't exactly fit this in a breadboard. I mean, it's the standard pin spacing for a breadboard for sure. But the issue is that um, these pins will always be connected to the pins beside. So how are you supposed to prototype with such a massive board? Well, that's where the sponsor of this video comes in, PCBWay. So I've designed these adapters. They take the dual inline pins and they convert out to single inline. And the beautiful thing about these boards is that it lines up perfectly to fit exactly on one of these small breadboards. So you can actually mount two side by side. You can either solder it directly to the pins or use female pin headers. So in order to set this up, my favorite way to do it is to take my female pin headers, pop them into my board with the pretty side along one end, and then you just cut right on top of the next one over like that and then take the pretty end on the other side, slide it on here, and then chop it again right up on that one. So you do lose a little bit, but you do get a really nice finish on the front. Then you can go and set this into here, and then just go ahead and solder it as normal. And once that's done, you can just put your pin headers in there. You know, need to measure 30 of them, chop them off at the knuckle, and then my favorite technique is to just pop them into the breadboard, like so. You can take the board out if you want a little bit more space to work. Pop that on there, and then get to soldering. And there you have it. Now you just need to make sure that you do the mirror image for the other side and you'll be ready to go. One thing to keep in mind when you use these for prototyping, I really recommend that you make yourself a reference sheet because as you can see, there's an A and an A. So essentially the 
sort of outside row of pins here. They go directly to these. But then these pins, the inside row, um, they're telegraphed like this. So the top pin there is here and the bottom pin there is here. So it's like you take this whole row and you move it over there. But once you flip it over, don't forget that it's the opposite. So this row goes here and then this row goes here. So now that you have your two mirror installed boards, you can just slide your microcontroller in like so. And then these fit absolutely perfectly on these little breadboards. Now the challenging part, how to flex this monster's muscles. So this is what I've come up with to try to test this massive microcontroller board. So first and foremost, I used all of the digital pins along one side of the board to make this supercomputer display. So essentially it is doing a random number for each one of these pins and setting the pin to high or low. And it's doing this every, I believe it's 100 milliseconds. So that gives us this little flashing LED display, like you would see if you just bought the flashing LEDs themselves. Also along this side, I am using eight analog inputs. So all of them going to these potentiometers. Let me explain what they do. So one, two, three controls the brightness of three of these LEDs and one, two, three controls the brightness of another three. And then the fourth one in each row controls the maximum brightness of the LEDs. So if you see, I can turn this down and it'll dim an LED. It's that guy over there. But also I can set the maximum brightness of every LED on that circuit. So that one's down and that one's down. So it displays all of my brightnesses. This is an awesome thing you can do with eight analog inputs. And then to push it even harder, I've used an I2C OLED. It seems to be pulsing a little bit for you, but not in real life. What it does is it reads out the values of all of the potentiometers. So here we go. We can bring one down and you see that's the 166 that's there. Or no, sorry, that's that 14 right there. That little number there. And also when I dim the whole row, the whole row goes down as well. And this just shows you how it works. See if I have one pot that's lower, so that's 120, it'll dim it by the correct amount every time I turn the pot. So it's doing that math in real time, as well as updating these LEDs. Along the bottom here, I'm just having it generate random numbers to display as well. So just so we can have more dynamism, even if these things aren't going. And despite all of this, I still have 17 unused pins. I'm still using 0% of program storage. I'm using about uh, uh, 7,500 7, bytes. And I'm using 2% of dynamic memory, essentially the RAM. So even this, which took me quite a while to set up and make function, is barely scratching the surface of what this microcontroller can achieve. So this is a call to action. Put it down in the comments below. I would like to make a video where I max out the capabilities or come close, at least try to max out the capabilities of this microcontroller. So let me know what kind of stuff we can have it do. We can have it compute. We can have it input or output down in the comments below. And perhaps I'm going to collect all the best suggestions and try to put them all to work. I also hope that you give this thing a try and you go over to pcbway.com, sponsor of this episode, to pick up my adapter boards. Uh, it makes it so much easier to breadboard than the dual inline pins. And you can use this to either breadboard or to connect to a solder Vero board. Thanks for watching.